Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and today we are covering Files in Postman and Visualizer. In this video, we're going to be covering three operations with Files in Postman. One is uploading a file, two is downloading a file, and three is visualizing a file. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now within Postman, here we have our file processing collection that I've created for you so that you guys can follow along with me in this video. You'll find this Postman template in the description below. As noted, we have three different requests we are working with. The upload file, download file, and visualize file. Upload file is super simple within Postman. All I did was create a Postman echo request, in particular the post request, and delete the body contents and then created a multi-part form data body that will allow us to see the file that we're sending to Postman, or in this case, uploading. So go ahead and click body, and then select your body type to be form data. Then we add a key of file. And in this case, by default, it's going to be a text value. But what we want is a file value. So we go ahead and click the key again, change it to file, and then now our value reflects to select files. We go ahead and click that, and we're going to click our hello world.pdf example. And once we click that, it's already uploaded it. Now once we've done that, it'll automatically create a header for us with the content type multi-part form data and a calculated boundary so that the server knows when it ends. Let's go ahead and click send. Now you'll see that we have our response with our files and then our hello world PDF and then the string value here. This string value here is a base64 encoded file. What that does is it allows us to protect the integrity and preserve the file when being sent over the internet. Also, it helps us view the raw contents of files within textual applications. So we have our base64 encoded value, which was done by Postman when we automatically uploaded the file to our request. And then we have some metadata that basically tells us what file type it is. And that's all there is to it for uploading a file. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our second example, download file. Clicking download file, you'll see that we have a URL variable. And in this case, it's a mock server that I created for this example, where I have one endpoint, which is file, and then a query parameter of type of PDF as a designation for the file type I want to return. Now in this case, most of the content here is within the test section. In the test section, you'll see that we have a Postman Visualizer template. And in here, we have a script tag for our JavaScript that sets the window.location.href value to the base64 encoded file that we were just talking about earlier. Now in this case, you see it's hard-coded within the script. And that's because when I tried passing it through as a variable, it actually caused a problem within Postman and caused it to crash. So I hard-coded the value within here for the sake of this example but you should be able to pass it through as a value through the Postman visualizer that set command. So let's go ahead and try this out. So clicking send, you'll see we get our response of the hello world PDF. And then we also have our web location file as well. Now when I click visualizer, you'll see that it initiates a download. Now go ahead and we click save. It actually went and downloaded that file for us. And then looking at preview, we can actually find this value, hello world PDF, which showed up in my other window. Just to show you one more other thing you can do, you can also set a web location and we'll be able to download it just the same manner. So I'm just commenting this out so that we can go ahead and show you. We click save. Now we'll go ahead and click send again. And since I'm in the Visualize tab, it already is saving that test PDF file. So we'll go ahead and click Save. And let's go ahead and go to that download section one more time. And there you have it. You'll see that we have a test file that I got from the internet. Now my last example I really would like to go through is the Visualize file. This one is very similar to the download file, but the difference here is that with download file, we're initiating a download, and in Visualize, we actually want to see the file within the HTML. There is a slight problem with this, though, which you'll see shortly, is that Postman does not allow us to actually visualize files within Visualizer. And 
it can be overcome simply, but we will only be able to visualize within the browser. So once I click Visualize File, we can go ahead and look at this request is exactly the same, except our test is different. Within our test, we have a little bit more HTML where we're importing a jQuery, and then we have two buttons, a Show button, a Hide button, and then we have a PDF div in here that is where we put the actual PDF file. Now we have some JavaScript here at the bottom where we have jQuery here, which just shows us what happens when we click the button. And in this case, it appends an embed tag with the source as the base64 encoded data to that PDF div we talked about earlier. And then hide just deletes that div that we create with show. And then you can see with our PM visualizer set, we're taking the values out of the response and throwing it into our HTML template. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. So clicking send here, you see that we get our value. And then when you go to visualize, you see we have show PDF and hide PDF. Clicking show PDF, you see this little scroll bar that comes through, but we actually don't see anything. And if you click hide, it goes away. Well, let's go ahead and inspect this visualization to see what's going on. Now clicking here, we see that in the console, we have refuse to load plugin data, which is that actual data file, because it violates the following content security policy, directive, object source, none. So what that means in this case is that we cannot have any object source within this HTML because this content policy directive says we're not allowed to have any. And if you click in the HTML, you can see that this content policy directive is set right within this meta tag. And in this meta tag, you can see all these different directives that Postman has set for us automatically. Because you may have noticed within our visualizer template, we don't have this meta tag in there. And that's because Postman automatically injects it into every HTML we create. Now this is a good practice because you want to have content security policy directives within your HTML, especially on the web, because it helps protect your web page from malicious scripts, attacks, files, anything. And this is meant so that you can designate trusted sources. But for Postman testing, it kind of gets in the way. So how can we get around this? Well, as you've noticed at the top, this is just a saved file in a folder in a temporary directory. We can go ahead and open this HTML, edit it, and then open it in the browser. So let's go ahead and try that out. Let's go ahead and move this over here. And let's look for that file name, which starts with an M. There it is. So we're going to right click here, and then we're going to open with, in this case, I'm going to use my favorite text editor, Visual Studio Code. For us to get this to work, we have to edit two directives here the object source directive and the frame source directives. So in here, instead of none, we're going to show this as data with a colon. And then in frame source directive, instead of none, we're going to have this to be data as well with a colon. So now I'll go ahead and click Save on this. And then we're going to reopen this file, but now within our browser. So now, opening this in the browser, we have our buttons again. If I click Show PDF, you can see that it comes up with Hello World. And if I click Hide, it goes away. So this would be some really cool functionality to add within Postman. And in order for them to do that, they'll have to give us the ability to edit that content policy directive. But also, they need to be sure that plugin PDFs are available within Postman Visualizer, or for that matter, any other document that you'd like to render within Postman Visualizer. But if all that's available to Postman team, they can go ahead and create this ability. Last thing I want to show is that you can do this within Postman as well in using a web location as I showed you earlier. It should be pretty simple and it's the same exact concept. All you have to do here is set the web location and then you have to edit the content policy directive, which we'll go over very briefly here. First, we're going to Remove the comment, comment the top, and save. We'll click send again. And now we get the same visualizer. We go and inspect visualization. Now we have our HTML, and you can see here the source is actually a file location within the web. 
Now we can go ahead and right click here and open the folder, which will take us back to that folder. And we look for our request. And here we have it. We're going to edit within our Visual Studio Code. And here, in order to actually get this to work, instead of using the data directive, we need to change it to HTTPS or HTTP as well if you're not using secure HTTP. So in this case, we'll just set it to both for the sake of this example. We click Save. And now we open up that file within our browser. Let's do show PDF. And you can see that it renders within the browser. And that about covers it for this video with Postman Visualizer and visualizing files. Thanks for following me in this journey. And if you really like this content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions on it, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Lastly, if you like this type of content and other content around IT tools and technologies, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next one. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.